My name is Cosmo Rafi, and we will be discussing Power BI, our out of box Power BI dashboards, and a little year in review from what we last showcased, mainly at our Safe Tech conference, I think back in April or, or, or May. Uh, we're going to go over four new dashboards the monthly reports dashboard, the three parts dashboard of inspections, findings, and actions, and a spills release dashboard. And then finally, we're going to actually go through um, all the existing dashboards and just show, showcase some of our edits, showcase some of our updates um, in case you didn't miss that Safe Tech conference. And at the end of it, as always, we'll get some QA going and we'll leave, leave room for you guys to give us feedback, uh, should there be any. And if you always want to give feedback, feel free to send an email to support at itrack365.com. Cool, so without further ado. So just to begin, we're showing existing reports and just some of the changes we made. Um, starting off with our title page here, everything's pretty standard. Just a quick little uh, tip of the iceberg glance as to how your company is performing. Um, the one thing we'd like to note is that we are looking at the TRIF and LTIF. If the data is in the system, this is something that um, you know we can definitely sit sit towards and uh, look at the formulas you guys have, look at the formulas that are online to really just see how can we uh, report your TRIF and LTIF and some other stats. And we actually are working on a monthly uh, or month over month and year over year rolling average for TRIF and LTIF to really just give you a bit of understanding of how um, how well your company is doing in those aspects. Next, we have the training dashboard, uh, pretty self-explanatory. You're looking at you know what training is highest attended, and you know from the departments, uh, you know what is which department has the most training done. On the top, we have our slicers. We can filter by year, filter by month. On the left-hand side, we can filter by status, by employee name, by course group, and by course course name. And the one change I like to note is to the bottom here, to the table. The difference um, before was that the table used to look like this, which would have the employees on the left-hand side, and then you would actually have to scroll all the way right just to see the data. So we see here that you know Kevin Collins had daily big routines over here, and you'd scroll really awkwardly all the way to the right until you found the one you're looking for. Now the way we have it set up is on the left-hand side you have the employees, and you actually just expand and um, retract them from to course group. And then once it gives you the course information of you know Melik's Alberta Class 5 license, his completed date, recertified date, comments, and status. All right, so it's just a cleaner way and you can filter by employee as before you were filtering by uh, course itself. Next, we have competency, very similar to training. Um, on the top here, we can slice by recertify and slice by created on. And we just see here at the top, you know, top five competencies that your company is working on. And as always, on the left-hand side, some filters you can filter through as well. And at the bottom, we made the similar change, um, you know, where we go uh, employee name into procedure group into procedure name. And then some assessment dates, last review dates, and the status of their procedure competency. Uh, next is event overview. This one is, you know, very, very basic. Just looking at, you know, top three event occurrences, the event completion rate, and the events by teams. Um, the biggest thing with this is if it's a monthly property inspection, and you know that team maybe was live for the last, um, on a last year, you'd want to see this number being 12. And as you're monitoring it, you know, you get six months down the road. You see they're still at six. It's good. They get to eight months down the road. They're still at six. Might be time to message that team and make sure the inspections are being done. Basis. Left hand side here, we have a filter by FBU and the date filters is always on top. Next one is our actual risk matrix and we made a lot of changes to this since the conference. Um, on the top, we have the created on date. We can change this to reported or occurred date, uh, depending on what 
your form type specifically uses. And on the top, we actually added three new slicers. So we have category. So if you want to see if it's a high, high risk, everything will be filtered out except for this little red section. A low risk, everything gets filtered out except for the green and medium will be the orange. From there, we can look at the impact, which uh, correlates to the um, the rows and the probability, which correlates to the columns. And as you're filtering down, you know, we, let's say we see a marginal extremely remote. We see there are two injuries. We can actually see which forms these were, what the description of the events were when they were reported, and actually opening up our portal as well. So just a cleaner table at the bottom for you to really interact with this dashboard. All right. And the next thing you can do is actually just filter by form number by the bottom by clicking the table, and this will dynamically update the cards on top. Next, we have the reactive efforts, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, any incident, any near miss, any has ID, I believe. Uh, you know, these um, unsafe form types uh, will be recorded by count of them. So we see there is 28 recorded. We can filter them by June or by month, sorry, by year, and by FPU. And at the bottom is always a little table about what's been going on with the form, um, some classifications, and the form link itself. You know, next we have proactive efforts, um, and obviously we will actually customize these when we, if you do set this up for reactive and proactive. Um, same idea as the reactive, the only difference is obviously the proactive form types that were submitted. Next we have incident count. You know, we see the number of incidents by classification, whether there was an injury, equipment property damage, motor vehicle spill release, or whatever classifications you guys used, mainly for the incident form type. We have some classifications on the right hand side as well um, for the injuries itself. And then at the bottom, just like I said, that table that explains to you, you know, what's been going on with these incidents. Next, we have top safety participation. This just lets you know, you know, filling out which forms at which frequency. And it's just a good way to make sure, you know, if there are those you know, daily checklists, are they being filled out properly? And you can filter by form type on the left. So if I go here and I say, you know, daily checklist. We see that Darren and support Neo systems are filling them out, but the other users were not. And at the bottom left, we have the FBU. Cool. Next, we have our cause analysis roll up, which is a work in progress. You know, we're still working on showing, you know, all the levels and all the uh, cause analysis level items that come alongside some of the incidents. So on the left hand side, we have form number and form title, which will allow you to you know, filter the cause analysis selections through them. So if we want to look at the rock truck operator, we know it was a safety scat. From there, we know, you know what type of event it was, equipment failure, and the comments related to that level item. Right. Um, and if you go all the way down, you can get the areas for corrective actions as well. You know, next we have our 2019 stats. We'll probably rename this to 2020 stats next month, just to, you know, I guess the previous year stats. Um, you know, if you're getting audited, if you have a safety meeting coming up and you want to show some basic stats, this is what this will do. You know, it shows the injury classification. It shows its recordable injuries. You know, um, the form types for leading indicators, some lagging indicators, and total 2019 leading indicators. This top one is inspections. The bottom one is just leading indicators itself. And now we're showing the new reports that we've created over the 2020 year. This is just a very simple monthly report dashboard. So you look at it, you look at the month of October of 2020. We see, you know, what days uh, had the most form usage. On the top, we see which forms are submitted and a link to them to view exactly what's going on. And on the right hand side, we have the FB use order. Um, so it's really good way just to um, understand how your iTrack system is being used. You can look for any anomalies. So we see here that it's pretty standard, but on the 26th, you know, we had a lot more forms submitted than we usually do. Uh, and it really just helps you keep track of, you know, if we have six forms on the 26th that are left in draft, people are just filling them out, they're hitting save, they're not really submitting them. So it's making sure that all the forms are going through the uh, correct processes.
you know, next we have our three port three part dashboard of inspections, findings and actions. And this one is pretty cool. So we have here a quick matrix. You know, if we look at the the middle, we have the office inspection, which is the inspection name. After that, we have the form number, which will say 2762. And from there, we have the inspection sections. All right, so if you want to look at, you know, the office inspection of the fire explosion hazards, we open that up and then we see, you know, the items that were selected. And on the right hand side, we have the answers to those questions. Um, so the best way that we want to utilize this form is if we're looking at 2762. On the bottom left here, we just want to scroll down to 2762, which will filter out this middle dashboard to um, totally include that. And if we look at the bottom right here, we see the inspection item answers actually filter as well. So in this one form, we had um, 26 yeses and 16 noes. And if we just left right click on or left click on no, sorry, we see that the only inspection items that show up are the ones that quote unquote failed. And if we left click yes, it also dynamically changes to showing which items were successful. And if we click the section on top, and we hover over the columns, we see that this section had two yeses and this section had one no. Obviously, if it's only three items, it's not very useful, but you know, one that has you know, 10, 12, maybe even 30 ins inspection items, just a good way to see you know, what passed and what failed of that section itself. And on the top right, we can filter by form type, and this is the occurred date of the inspection. Now, the next part of the form is finding, so if we control click, We'll actually pull up to the findings page, which is you know very similar. Um, yeah, which is sorry, which is very similar um, to the inspections table, except that the inspection items that um, you know have a finding associated to them of so two seven six two. This will uh, you know show you where the conformative, non-conformative, compliant, non-compliant. What was the finding that was attached to it? Uh, we are looking to add comments to the findings table that'll be coming up in probably early quarter of 2021. Uh, but it's just a good way to see, you know, how do the inspection sections, the inspection section items do um, as a whole. Cool. And the next one is our action registry. This is a, one of the first reports we have made, um, and this is part of the three-part section in terms of. Um, we'll actually add the inspection section item name to this dashboard and will only show actions that were created off. Whereas this dashboard currently will just show you the due, overdue, and complete by just your month and day and some stats on the bottom. Uh, when we have some actions that were filled out, you know, with an inspection section item name, it will show the same thing, just filtered towards that um, specific item. All right. And then from there, you can look at the username, the description, the start and due date, some statuses, and some the form link as always. Cool. And finally, we have our spills release dashboard. This is the newest um, dashboard of them all. On the top right here, we have is it, is reportable, so we can see here that you know is it a reportable incident? It's a reportable spill. Sorry, if we select no, it'll change. Yes, it'll change. And on the left hand side here we have the material. So let's say we want to look at the asbestos spill and the hydraulic oil spill. We can compare those. Um, we can sort by FBU. And the table at the bottom will dynamically change depending on what you select with a bit of a description, you know, when, when it occurred, how much material and volume was released, and a form link as always to open up to the portal. So those are the six new dashboards that we've created um, over the 2021 year. Um, obviously, we, we would expect feedback as these are newer reports. Something that you guys want to see, uh, you know, feel free to message support at iTrack365.com just for us to get uh, make the best product we possibly can for you guys. Um, and upcoming in the 2021 year, ideally, we want to start adding, you know, exam and courses information. Um, some more 2020 stats, some more LTIF stats, some more TRIF stats, and finally finalize that cause analysis rollup that I showed earlier to really just let you guys uh, go through the decomposition tree of your guys' incidents. 
Well, that's all. Thank you for coming to this week's webinar. Um, as always, see you guys next week. And if you have any questions, please email support at itrack365.com, message us on LinkedIn, um, or feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video. Thank you and have a great day.